मंगल भगवान विष्णु मंगल गरुराध्वज मंगल पुंडरीकाश मंगलाय तनु हरि गुड मॉर्निंग रेस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल अब डिब्रु कलेज डर जीतु गुलाबहार सर आवर रिसोर्स पार्सन फर टूडे प्रफेसर सुदेशना भट्टाचार्य फ्रम गुवाहाटी इूनिवार्सिटी एंड पार्टिशिपेन्ट्स फ्रम द डिफारेंट पार्टस अब द कान्ट्री आई एम डर अदिति बरवा कोअर्डिनेटर अब दिस वेबिनार वेलकामिंग अल अब यू टू द फार्ष्ट डे अब दिस टू डे वेबिनार टू वि हेल्ड टू डे एंड टू मरो Before I proceed, I would like to request our principal sir, Dr. Jitu Bura Gohai, to say a few words and inaugurate the webinar. Good morning to all of you, respected resource persons, for sir, Sudhir Nagoda sir, your department was in Skit, Goa University. Esteemed participants, my faculty colleagues, my dear students. Again, good morning and welcome to all of you to this webinar on a very relevant and important issue. That is the reflections of management in the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, management is the uh, part and parcel of each and everybody's life. Management is getting things done effectively and uh, efficiently through the people and with the people. So, Bhagavad Gita. Deals with the uh, human problems in a human way. That is why it has a tremendous appeal in the context of modern management. I'd like to give you one example, Mister. There are some aspects to the definition of work that is depicted in the Gita, as Sri Krishna articulates. The doer has the right to work. Karma neva adhikaraste. The doer has no control on outcomes which of action, ma foolish collation, and the when yeah in the, in the first in when when we see the the, the Bhagavad Mahat, Mahat Gita is uh, actually is uh, delivered by Sri Krishna to train the minds of Arjuna during the battlefield at Kurukshetra. In the battlefield of Kurukshetra, when Arjuna So the near and dear one, near and dear ones, his relatives, his gurus, and he was at that time he was he got confused, and uh, he so whether to fight or not to fight. So the Dasmundan, this Dasmundan position of Arjuna in the film, in the uh, first chapter that was depicted in Gita, is a typical human situation which many people come across in the world of work. Sri Krishna, by sheer power of his inspiring words, raised the level of Arjuna's mind from the state of inertia to the state of righteous action, from the uh, from the selflessness to the state of faith and self confidence, and in the ultimate victory of dharma, that is the ethical action. When Arjuna got over his despondence and stood ready to fight, Sri Krishna gave him the gospel for using his spirit of intense action, not for his own benefit. Not for his, uh, uh, not for satisfying his own greed and desire, but for using his action for the good of many, with faith in the ultimate victory of ethics of our unethical actions and truth of our untruth. Arjuna responded quickly and emphatically by declaring that all his delusions were removed, and uh, that he is ready to do what is expected him in the given situation. So. And another point is that the Sri Krishna's advice with regard to the temporary failures in the actions is no doer of good ever ends in misery. Every action should produce results. Good action produces good results, and evil begets nothing but evils. Therefore, always act well and be rewarded. Sister. And Bhagavad Gita's another advice that is relevant. I should say one thing there. Uh, now that is a uh, yes. 
तस्मात् सर्वेशु कलेशु मामनस मुरो युद्धोसा therefore under all circumstances uh, remember me and then fight fight means perform your duties so management needs those people who practice what they please i firmly believe that this uh, webinar is a very participants i like to say that it it must be a not to be mistaken welcome to madam uh, professor sudeshna for the and welcome to all our participants thank you very much yeah thank you sir thank you um, i take the privilege to introduce to you our resource person for today professor sudeshna bhattacharya from the department of sanskrit guwahati university professor sudeshna bhattacharya did her ma in sanskrit and the phd from guwahati university and the kaibya vyakarana sastri from assam sanskrit board she specializes in sanskrit literature and allied subjects Till date, she has published 25 research articles, one book, and two edited volumes. An ardent researcher, Professor Bhattacharya, has completed one UGC major research project and two UGC minor research projects. The MPhil and PhD scholars guided by her are from multiple disciplines like mass communication and journalism, Department of Foreign Language, besides. from the department of sanskrit at present eight phd and two mphil scholars are doing research under her supervision she is also the recipient of two national best paper awards we are indeed happy and fortunate mm-hmm. enough to have such a resource person with us today and are eagerly waiting to hear from her i now request professor sudeshna bhattacharya to take over the session and deliver her lecture on the topic the basics of management reflected in the shrimad bhagavad gita good morning everyone respected principal of dibru college dr jitu buragohai sir respected coordinator of the webinar dr aditi aditi bhuya by deo the moderator shrimati nandita boshya madam honorable teachers of dibru college respected participants from various fields and my dear students the topic with which i am going to deal here today is the basics of management reflected in the shrimad bhagavad gita first of all i want to tell you that i am not an expert on this but i am here to share some of my views on the said topic which i feel to be very relevant primarily at this time of worldwide pandemic situation obviously the question may arise in your mind why and how can the book shrimad bhagavad gita be associated with the ideas related to management right but our respected principal sir has given the right introduction to the topic still we can have the query how could the sanskrit verses of age old days be correlated with a branch of knowledge like management that owes its origin to the modern era and deals with the modern issues of human life before going to respond to these questions i just want to lay before before you before all the uh, participants some seminal features of the gita most of which are very common and i know you may know it very well please excuse me for this repetition as it is necessary for negotiating the components of to- today's discussion before going to the subject of discussion i just want to clarify another point here uh don't misunderstand me my dear students 
Today's generation relates the concept of management in connection with only a business motive. I may be wrong. To most of the people of today's younger generation, as I feel, the concept of management signifies the principles of business administration and they prefer to equate with the course materials of BBA and MBA only. So it is the raison d'etre of the present submission of today's lecture. The full name of the Gita is Srimad Bhagavad Gita Upanishad as the students of Sanskrit know it. Commonly, it is known as Srimad Bhagavad Gita and in short, it is known as Gita as you all know. Here, in the term Srimad Bhagavad Gita Upanishad, the term Upanishad has been used not as a noun but as an adjective qualifying the gravity of the subject matter of the book and it relates the upper graded teachings of the book itself. As we all know that this book is a part of the Mahabharata, the theme being associated with the story narrated in the Vishma Parvan. We all know the backdrop of the narrative here is the battlefield as Sar has already stated and the book starts with the famous statement coming out of Tritarashtra's mouth Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Samaveta, Yuyutsava, etc. But my dear friends, do not be afraid. I am not going to quote Sanskrit verses in my every second sentence. It is true that the Gita is a book of Indian epistemology in its higher plane and it establishes the scholarly doctrines of the Vedantic philosophy. But my strong disclaimer in this regard is that I do not have the eligibility to address these grave philosophical issues and in today's forum I am not going to address the epistemological views of the book anyway. <clears throat> Sorry. Today I will take the book as the best specimen of the issues connected to the ages of social science. Uh, many eyebrows may be raised, but we must decipher this glory of the great book, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. We all know that in the battlefield, Arjuna succumbs to his mental agony and he instantly withdrew his bow and arrow when he saw all his kith and kin before him as the opponent in the war. Just relate such a situation. What was Arjuna's mental condition then? Arjuna got confused and could not take any decision thereafter. His mind was disoriented and it got out of his control. All his ego came out to retain his thought process. At this point, Sri Krishna, the hero of the scene, appears as the counsellor of the third Pandava. And he started to inspire his friend Arjuna to regain the strength to fight against the oppressor. And finally, exchanging long dialogue with Arjuna, Krishna succeeded in his venture. And the rest 
is known to all of us arjuna finally fought with his fullest vigor and power and ultimately could bring victory to his team over the kauravas this is the story behind the book and most importantly with the victory over the enemies which is very important arjuna could protect the progeny from total destruction actually here lies the point of correlating management theory with the teachings of the gita the most interesting part of the book again is that it is a known story to almost each and every indian citizen who is raised by hearing the snapshots of the epic mahabharata in every phase of one's life we cannot deny this fact but what is unique here is that this common and the known story percolated in the gita insinuates some basic morals of mankind which can be correlated very easily with the equations and core principles of management in the broader perspective of the term this actually necessitates the concept of today's topic of discussion with the background of the battlefield where two families of the same clan appeared as the enemies the happenings of the gita speak much more than the words could say so each and every word of the gita is heavier with sense i want to share with you actually the basic plan of the plot because before going to the correlation before going to establish the correlation we must have a, a blueprint of the plan undertaken by krishna actually this plan makes the story more intricate and eternal forever we have to notice here that the story of the gita has come to us within a three layered communication process my dear students it is very important in the very first layer the conversation was between dhritarashtra and sanjaya where dhritarashtra even having don the royal hat was deprived of enjoying the power of eyesight and sanjaya on the other hand even being a simple charioteer because of his selfless service to his master vyasa could achieve the strong divine eyesight that gave him power to overcome visual distance and made him capable of experiencing the happenings of far away place see the contradiction here respected audience just look at the twist of the process of placing the social issues and concerns in the subject matter of the gita this can be penetrated only with deep concern of grave issues of the society but this part of the book is often overlooked by the readers but the basics of management of human activities take its turn from this very point in the gita this part of the narration brings forth the existence of the fast apparent social disjuncture it exemplifies the subjugation of the royal power of thritarashtra as he was blind with his fatherly affection towards the mistakes of his son and he showed his back for this towards the benefit of the society in general though 
this is the irony of the story though he was well aware of the misdeeds of the kauravas and knew that at the end it is the pandavas who would get victory in the battle thus this part of the gita conveys the intrinsic suggestion of human life that when we cannot manage our emotion towards a positive direction and we stay away from controlling the negative impulses we are going to be defeated by nature any way any time now the second level of communication of the gita which is very much prominent it appears through the conversation between arjuna and krishna and generally people consider the book as the dialogue between these two characters only which is not fully correct it is true that this level of conversation is the kernel of the whole endeavor and all the possible management strategies have been employed here by the planner krishna to get his work done in a smooth and lucid manner but why this part has gathered so much of importance in the world what truth can we dig out here it is very important to notice here my dear students i am referring this specially for your concern here so you must notice that in this juncture arjuna the most intelligent seeker of truth remember arjuna was the most intelligent seeker of truth of his time who had already defeated many of the stalwarts in the battle not in this battle i am not referring to this battle in earlier battles of his life opens his heart out before his most favorite friend and guide lord krishna with deep confusion and recession that made him totally perplexed and addled he was away from his duty but krishna the captain and commander who was actually waiting for this to come as per his game plan addresses each and every query of his friend one by one and tries to eradicate the gloom of arjuna's mind in such a way that arjuna gains his mental strength and can decide to fight against the durjadhana durjadhanas so my dear students again one irony appears here the words of krishna employed here have double entender why because as on one side those could eradicate the unsteadiness of arjuna's mind and on the other side simultaneously those words brought clarity of thought in the mind of the great warrior arjuna in such a way that he could proceed to take the most righteous and coveted decision in his life we can observe here the positive trick employed by krishna for a universal cause that is for the benefit of mankind in general krishna's intention of removing the perplexity of arjuna's mind was as much important to him as it was to make arjuna's cognition hooked on the prefixed word it is my observation here that the surface level of understanding this equation takes us to the execution of the policy which is also a major component of managerial strategies 
the effectiveness of which can be attained only through a sharp managerial precision krishna's handling of the weakest mind amidst the harrowing situation of war and his steps to turn it to the toughest one to make it capable of taking the hardest decision of human life can undoubtedly place krishna as the most effective manager and counselor in this world we have to admit it this level of conversation placed in the gita again in its intrinsic stature percolates the message that even with full physical power and strength when the mind does not stay under control the intellect is not guided in the proper way the person becomes crippled from insight and cannot take the right decision we all feel such situation in our everyday life but what happened there <clears throat> in that juncture of every person's life as we need some advices from others as we need guidance from someone whom we believe totally in that situation krishna arrives as the guide and teacher of arjuna the interactions between krishna and arjuna reach to sanjaya and dhritarashtra my dear students uh, just visualize this condition the interactions between krishna and arjuna uh, which was happening in the battlefield it reached to sanjaya and dhritarashtra to teach them the truth of life which they already knew in their own way thus in a very tricky manner the clear voice clear audience and clear sentience of sanjaya and of dhritarashtra barring his clear voice as dhritarashtra was blind had been triggered off with innate feeling through the clear empathy that krishna showed towards arjuna at that moment thus the teachings and words of motivation employed by krishna were indirectly reaching to these two listeners also in an indirect way which was a part of the plan chalked out by krishna the planner now coming to the third level of communication as i have already uh, told that the story of the gita comes to us through three level communication process now we have come to the third level of communication here what does gita do the gita disseminates its principles of management of the self and the society in the world of its connoisseurs whoever understands the essence of this book is certainly elevated to a more concerned and responsible person by managing the inner self and he or she is transformed to a strong personality who can lit the lamp of true human progress in the society may it be the case of a first standard student or be that of the towering personalities like mahatma gandhi swami vivekananda bala gangadhar tilak or rishi aravind we know the level of understanding of the chronicles of the gita may differ in context and content which is obvious but it remains always the source of inspiration to its readers and it helps them to take the life towards a higher level so the gita is a perennial source of all enriching ideas 
that people of any time any place can take resort to for managing their ego emotion and actions and by following its suggestions one can grasp life's teachings as the endowment of progress and refinement in the true essence of those terms thus as a citizen of india we must bring out the book gita from its mistaken projection only as a religious scripture the expressions projected here are rather the strongest specimen of handling the cognitive strategies in the practical situation it can undoubtedly be endorsed as a super model of successful management policy crossing the boundaries of caste creed religion language and geographical hiatus we must notice the fact that the questions asked by arjuna to krishna are the common queries that appear every now and then in the mind of each one of us in every second step of our life as we always confront the fight between the truth and falsity inside our mind as a human being respected participants of today's program please tell me one thing with a shattered and confused mind who can take a right decision even with all the prerogatives one can enjoy as the most civilized living being on this planet so the answer is with the message of the gita now the main question comes to our mind that how could this expressions of the gita be equated with the norms and rules of management what is the connecting point between these two apparently opposite indices of knowledge to address this we have to go into the deeper meaning of the concept of management ideal i am lucky that our respected principal sir has already paved the way of this line of thinking what is management in the true sense of the term why is it necessary in life how can it be connected to human behavior in the society what it does as a branch of study all these are very pertinent questions in connection with today's context to address all this let me allow to go into the basic principles of management first we must accept this idea that before being a separate branch of study the principles of management encode the equation of a peaceful and progressive social situation as all other so social sciences do from this point of view it is very much true to say that the world runs through the application of the successful policies of management and it remains eternally true transcending all types of barriers of time and place even the story of human civilization started with the evocation of the managerial skills coming out of the human brain with a view to controlling and overcoming the obstacles created by natural forces and it was done to get the better position over other animals in this universe we all know this so when the veda the great mass of knowledge appeared in the minds of the rishis those rishis who i prefer to call the facilitator of 
psychodynamics as it is related in the modern language the underlying management strategies started to get unfolded and and activated with the words of wisdom on the basis of human experiences in the practical life there is no iota of doubt that the policies of management can never be conceptualized in the stand alone position it can neither be carved in the path of escapism from the reality it cannot be related either in the world of isolation it is rather the process to stand with the practical problem and to come up with a proper and fruitful solution without causing any subsidiary damage to the society as a whole so what can be a better example of the reflections of a fruitful execution of successful management strategies than that is employed in the gita i am not telling this because i am a student of sanskrit it is universally true it is known to all the man it is known to all the management students that at the most fundamental level management is a branch of study that is based on a set of five principles namely planning organizing staffing leading and controlling thus a manager must be a planner an organizer a public relation officer a leader and a controller in one it is really a very tough job and it requires high level training and supervision for its proper execution in this context we can quote the meaningful statement of steve jobs i find it very interesting that is why i want to refer it before you steve jobs as all of you know he is one of the successful business leaders of the world once in his conversation he said i quote simple can be harder than complex you have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple and good thus to manage the world of work one has to be clean in thought and acquire simplicity first then only one can get the position of a leader a complex personality cannot get the cannot achieve the position of a leader in the true sense this statement that come out of the practical experience of a world business leader i deliberately uh use this reference because it is our general tendency when we can relate the practical example with the sayings of a book then only we can go nearer to the message and uh, then only we our mind accepts the chronicles that is why i have brought this example here so uh this statement of steve jobs came out of the practical experience of this business leader and it endorses the fact that to be a successful manager one must be a self managed person first and thereafter only he or she can be a true leader by creating or following the path of a planned workfield just like an organizer 
so all the roles are interconnected interrelated like the ecosystem in this context i am really allured to refer to the stanford commencement address delivered by the business leader of today's world steve jobs in 2005 again i have brought out another uh, statement of steve jobs because it is i i have found it relevant with today's topic steve jobs in this address he related the incidents of the time of the period when he had been passing through all the negative phases and remained encircled by the gloom of uncertainty and despair it happened in his early life we all know after being a dropout from his college he was a dropout because he was totally disinterested in the course offered then he visited the hari krishna temple and after visiting this temple he was influenced by the chanting of the mantras this he has declared he has expressed clearly in his speech and when after 10 years he started to join the dots of his life of this part this past phase of confusion actually he could understand that to stand in life one has to be faithful either to god or to life or to destiny or to karma this steve jobs unhesitatingly expressed during the special speech and this is available in the internet you can go through you can go through it any time according to your convenience every time i listen to this part of job speech i get ostracized by sensing here the clear reflection of the message of the gita and to fill the echo of the words delivered by krishna in the gita and that is why as i have already stated i am sharing this particular excerpts with you and it will act as a practical example in the field of management thus i think at this point and i do believe it too that the respected listeners must have got the basic reason of our decision that the gita can take the role of a guide to each and every management personality not only in india but in the entire world so i feel we the indians must take pride on that and we must try to popularize this legacy of the achievement of our forefathers we can take it in the floor of the entire management world so that everybody will be inter- interested in the message of the gita the gita from its beginning to end draws the way how to get out of the confused situation in life and how to remain calm and composed amidst apparent bewildered situation till one is relieved from inner fight and one can find the path of the solution here we can quote the famous verse from the book which was uttered by lord krishna before arjuna to make him convinced about the plan he was going to execute in the form of the battle the verse runs as king karma king akarameti 
कवय अप्यत्र मोहिता तत्ते कर्म प्रवक्षा जज न्वा मोक्षशे शुभा दिस वर्ड एक्सप्रेस दैट इन लाइफ इवन अ कवि दैट इज a much sophisticated and learned soul is confused to take decision at times and cannot come to the point of solution by himself he even cannot conceive what is to be done and what is not to be done in today's language do's and, sorry do's and don'ts so krishna the leader come organizer takes the responsibility of showing the right right path to arjuna and the path shown to arjuna by krishna by following which arjuna will get rid of all negative issues of his life and will be able to discharge his duty as the protector of the clan the most striking point to be observed here as i do feel is that in the parlance of the gita we see that krishna though he knew everything beforehand and could execute his supernatural power even in the very initial stage to convince arjuna my dear students it is very important this point is very important krishna has given full authority to arjuna to open up with all his queries and confusion one by one and only after hearing each and every point of concern showed by arjuna krishna came up with his own explanation and deliberation that could mold arjuna's mind slowly but effective the seminal issue of the great expression of motivation is that subsequently with the relocation of his thought arjuna could stand again to perform the duty designated to him as a khatriya ruler this strategy of managing the situation adopted by krishna in the gita reminds me of the successful management equation reflected through the words of keval desai one of the former colleague of sundar pichai the ceo google who expressed his feeling in connection with his opinion about the business master i quote he sundar pichai was a very strong opinionated person i like the adjective who has clear point of views about where product and initiative might go but he is very good at letting other people's opinions emerge before he gives his own now relate this situation with the happenings of the gita it can be easily equated as a verbatim reflection of krishna's managerial strategy that elevated krishna to a world leader see my dear students how the strategies reflected in the gita can easily be related to any type of successful application of management equation in this world actually gita outpours the core message of self and society management all through i have already incorporated this and the best part of this message is the expansion of philanthropic ideals in the society each and every words of this book correlates the successful administration of the theory of self control and self introspection this message of gita teaches us the strongest universal principle of life that no individual work 
or no personal decision can be of higher value than the overall benefit and advancement of mankind the society runs through a balance of managing the forces of principles and practice in every walk of life it is true this equation is true and i think we all will come to the univocal opinion that it is needless to point out again under the present situation of pandemic fear how much important to maintain this balance is even a small child knows it when someone so we may say that when someone causes disturbance and shakes this balance of principle and practice and looks for only material benefit the cosmos immediately turns into a chaos initiating the force of destruction and it is proved to be true again even in this age of scientific and technological advancement actually there may be a day long discussion on this topic i must say but it is not possible to go on explaining this interesting topic with its intricacies with its strategies of management ideals for the whole day so i'm going to summarize my speech by pointing out some more points in this regard the teachings of the gita can be used as a tool for cognitive therapy also it explains the ways and means of attaining the skill of remaining away from regressive addictions and of following the way of meaningful sojourn in life so prevention is better than cure we all know if we go through the message of gita we can prevent our life from ensuing destruction that is the importance of gita in our life in our life's journey the sense organs remain as a very subtle instrument of knowledge and they can deceive the soul very easily by disturbing the balance of the mind this is explained very clearly by krishna in the gita arjuna being a person of high intellect could understand this but he wanted to know in this regard from krishna this arjuna did to be doubly assured so krishna also with his behavioral skill and super power of eloquence tells about this truth yatato api kanteya purushasya vipaschita indriyani pramathini haranti prasavam mana indriyani pramathini this sense organs take us towards destruction so these unsteady sense organs should be controlled at proper time with proper measures it is true that the entire surroundings try to disrupt the attention of human life but through practice and power of mind one can overcome these issues and can march forward towards the path of success in the true sense of the term and that is the core message of the book gita gita takes utmost care in controlling the mind as the complete strategy of any exercise good or bad sprouts from the mind itself there is a long discussion in the gita on mind itself so it is very much important to restore mental strength of each one of us to raise the degree of our life's journey
to upgrade ourselves to see the good everywhere to see the similarity of our soul in every individual soul and this can be done by following the path of practicing self management strategies available in the gita it is important to consider the fact that the gita places different types of the strategic ways to reach the goal <coughs> sorry like any other general book of management the gita shows us the goal specific ways for the execution of the working almanac and these narratives are very very useful for a meaningful exercise of management of any type these are a very common and all of us know this we refer here to the famous deliberation of krishna regarding his explanations of the ways of gyana yoga karma yoga abhyasa yoga bhakti yoga whenever we refer to gita we refer to these yogas the gita itself negotiates the term yoga with the concept of expertise in yoga karma su kaushalam so all these yogas can generate higher skill in the process of tackling the problem of life in a more effective and systematic way the gyana yoga ensembles a person to know his goal in a proper way the karma yoga facilitates the program of good work that develops the skill as well as the physical strength of the doer the abhyasa yoga generates the functioning of practice leading one's work and worth towards perfection the bhakti yoga upgrades the process of our spiritual journey making us more concern of our dedication towards service than self when this teachings of the gita is religiously followed by the stakeholders of the society in general and that of an organization in particular it enhances the force of the universal and organizational strength in cumulative progression and the whole society or the organization then can become the root of real and sustainable growth which in terms of modern economics the growth in true essence and which is needed for the overall development of a country such growth should be the motto of all managerial exercises yes the point of profit will obviously be there in business organizations but it should never surpass the value of societal health and development we all have come to know that in today's world the measurement of overall growth is not only dependent on the progressive development of intelligent quotient iq as it was thought earlier but it has been collided with the gradation of emotional quotient eq and more interestingly in today's scenario the social growth is also measured in connection with the adversity quotient aq reflected through the behavior of the members of the society so the emotional quotient takes an adversity quotient and makes the way of development in a proper way the management criterion that is why must go by addressing these issues and though the terms were not coined during the days of the gita the intrinsic equation of growth level here addresses all these social equations in essence and that is the importance of the gita we don't find here uh, the reference of iq aq or eq but the essence of these cues these questions 
are already depicted in the Gita in a very subtle manner. The present situation of the world is well projected through the measurement of adversity quotient, represented through the pandemic situation created by the attack of COVID-19. We all know this. Most of the people are confused and pressurized with mental stress and strain. The parents are unable to manage their children. The students are clueless. The teachers cannot manage their duties. The businessmen are confused. The laborers are sacked. People are dying. The whole world is oozing with the crippling pain amidst the hazards of total confusion. People are getting prone to take extreme steps like suicide. With all these regressive outcomes, the present condition of the society has rightly been compared with a carnage of battlefield. And the doctors, health workers, the patients are battling for the life and living. So these people are termed as Corona fighters. And we all have become accustomed to see and hear the do's and don'ts during this pandemic situation. Exactly this situation. Why I am referring to this, the present situation? Because exactly the similar situation can be compared with the situation, confused situation of Arjuna's mind. My dear students, see and come to the end. That it is important to think that fighting not always does not always refer to a war of real weapons, but it relates the fighting between the good and the bad. This is exactly the similar message what the Gita has been trying to percolate through the ages. In the arrival of a war-like situation in the society. We must focus on our duties and try to follow the governed rules laid down through precision. This will be beneficial for the society as a whole. So, there is no harm in saying that at this juncture of mismanagement in the society, the sermons of the Gita can offer the basics of life's right principle. It can show the world that a managed and measured life can endure the ups and downs in the surroundings and sustain the present scars with a steady living schedule. And it can also offer its most effective equation regarding the positive emotional question. Uh, I have uh, correlated this. The most effective message of emotional quotient projected in, in the Gita, as I believe, is Dukkheshu Anu Divigna Mana Sukheshu Vigata Spriha, which means one could face the worldly hurdles by staying unperturbed in either of glory or gloom. And this is the ultimate mantra of the successful management in every sphere of life. Now, I'll not linger much. Already I have taken much time, I think. But it is the fact that advocating the Vedic mantra, Agni Mile Purohitam, the rishis in India started to encode the basic principle of managing the existence of human life in this world. Along with this prayer, they have taken, they have taken, I should say, a parallel propitiation towards the fire god, sometimes with prayer, sometimes with fear, and sometimes with admiration. All were kept inside the ambit of management policy, though in a crude form. During that early dawn of human civilization, the only concern of human life was to learn the ways to manage 
the living and the gita being the follower of the top down model of the veda has inculcated the strategies of management of the ego and emotion which otherwise spoil the generic development process so the gita advises to follow the sattvika path or the higher way of life which is free from the idea of selfish attitude the excitement of the rajaguna and the tamaguna disturb the balance of the growth of the society this book that is the gita also endorses the basic management criterion of keeping strong belief in the system and the leader arjuna's firm belief in krishna's words elevated him from the ocean of his confusion this belief and suspicion generate destruction and spoil the ambience of happiness and happiness so it spoil the growth of happiness and mental peace so krishna utters the eternal mantra of equal sustenance mai va mana adhats mai buddhi niveshaya niveshishyati mai eva at urdham na samshaya that means you keep krishna is telling you keep your belief in me i'll do good to you as well as to the society now i say that gita being the book of social science it establishes the balanced mechanism of society management when the untruth prevails problems emerge this book can guide us through the right path it may not be very alluring from outside but it will certainly take us through na hannate hannamane sharire now i again convey my gratitude and thankfulness to the organizers and with these words i want to complete my speech today thank you we have a question which, uh, which is like what is the basic of shriman bhagavad gita and what is the role it, of it in our life uh, the question has been put up by kukila gosami uh, ma'am uh, kukila just sent a message saying that uh, she is a research uh, scholar okay okay it's okay actually the gita should be an almanac of our life we should go uh in accordance with the teachings percolated in the gita gita has addressed the problem the grave issues of our life and it has given a solution also so if we go through the message of gita the teachings of gita we will find uh, the solution to our problem that is why it should be read it should be uh, grasped by all in our life Ma'am, there's another question. Of course, it's of of the similar uh, trend. What okay. is the meaning of Shrimad Bhagavad Gita? Shrimad Bhagavad Gita. It is the title of the book. I have already mentioned the complete title is the Shrimad Bhagavad Gita Upanishad. Actually, Shrimad Bhagavad. These two part. These two part are the adjective related to Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna is Sriman Sri Krishna is Bhagavan and the uh, the speech that came out of the mouth of Bhagavan Krishna Lord Krishna it is uh, it was so meaningful that it has the capacity to mesmerize the heart just like music that is why Gita the part Gita that is song it is attached to the title Uh, as a whole this title relates that shrimad bhagavad gita is not at all a difficult book to understand it has the capacity to give us delight and happiness in every situation of our life that is the that is the core message of this title shrimad bhagavad gita another question that has come up which i think is quite interesting is 
how does the manager of a commercial industry hmm. be benefited from uh, Gita's teaching? And this is from Dr. Tapan Datta from JB College. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Datta. Uh, actually, this is the basic query of today's generation because I have already stated uh, in my uh, words that uh, there is a misunderstanding about the concept of management. We always want to relate the concept of management along with financial or economic activities. It is true that business organization a search for profit but that is a part of the organization only a partial fact of the organization that the organization is going to make profit but before going to make profit the it is the duty of the organization to ensure the development of mankind the development of the workers working there and the development of the society as a whole so money making attitude cannot be the sole objective of any type of organization even it uh, may be of uh, business organization but even then uh, this organization organization had to go with the uh, value of the society this i think ma'am there's another very interesting question and that is uh, how can gita be uh, circulated all over the world and why do people keep it uh, to read Gita at a later stage of their life? This is a uh, question has been made by Dr. Mandakini Mahanta. Okay. Uh, thank you Mandakini Mahanta. Actually, uh, she is my student uh, and it is an interesting question. But as you are a student of Sanskrit, you know, one who knows Sanskrit or the students of Sanskrit, they read Gita from the uh, very uh, from beginning of the student life. But as the Gita, I have already told that as the Gita uh, always goes with an epistemological issues of Indian philosophy, and as people tend to be philosophical towards the end of their life after doing everything in their life after going through all the stages of life dharma artha kama when they seek the ways of moksha that is salvation they come to take resort to srimad bhagavad gita but actually the gita is for all I have already mentioned from the class one, uh, standard one student up to Balagangadhar Tilak, Rishi Aurobindo, Gita has its own attraction to each and every one of the society. And it uh, goes beyond the barriers of caste, creed, religion, language, space, everything. Uh, there's another question from a very young participant. She is a BA second year SEM student, haven't mentioned her name, but she is saying, what is the role of our mind in Gita reading? Okay, okay. Uh, I have already mentioned, there are so many verses uttered by Krishna, where Krishna teaches Arjuna how to control the mind. Actually, mind in the so mind is the source of everything. The mind, it generates good sense and bad sense equally. So we have to control our mind. And for this, we have to go through the uh, specific the specific ways and means and uh, being a student of Sanskrit, I always prefer to relate uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita as the best source of controlling the mind because mind is based on the indriyas I have told the sense organs and sense organs are very unsteady and every time the sense organs are taking away the strength of the mind so through the yogas I have mentioned this of Vyasa Yoga, Karma Yoga, Gyana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. It is our duty to control the mind, to, con uh, to control the senses. And if we can control our mind, then we don't have to look back. It will 
take us through all the um, negative issues of our life and it will take us towards our goal so that was a question from a student but now we have a question i think from a very concerned parent so her question is as a teacher and a parent how do we give the knowledge of gita to a new generation okay and how do we make them understand the ethics and the importance of gita uh first of all we have to know the essence of gita then only we can we can disseminate or we can percolate the knowledge of gita to younger generation and i should express my gratitude to the translators of the gita gita is the most uh, gita is translated in almost all the important languages of the world so if someone wants to learn the message of gita he or she can go through this translation also it is not mandatory that one uh, has to know the sanskrit language to learn uh, the message of gita the message of gita is very common and uh, different types of different scholars they have given their explanations uh, on gita on the message of gita the parent or the teacher they can go through it and going through grasping the message the utility of the message of gita they can transfer this knowledge to the new generation and it is our duty really it is our duty if we can generate the awareness which we have come through gita in the minds of the young people i do believe this youth they can get to follow the real path of their life they will come away from the path of destruction they will come uh, to join uh, uh, join in the process of benefit of the society ma'am we have a request for you from rajesh shri das can you explain the three levels of communication in gita uh, i have already told and this is a very interesting uh, process uh, taken uh, by krishna in the srimad bhagavad gita because the gita is the game plan of krishna it is the brain child of krishna as a leader here the three level communication comes in this way in the basic level in the first level it is the communication between dhritarashtra and sanjaya and in the second level it is the communication between arjuna and sri krishna and in the third level it is the level of mass communication we we each and every person we can communicate our heart with the heart of arjuna thus it is uh, it is three level conversation projected in the gita another question i think is from a student um how do you define krishna's character as an ideal friend it is a very interesting uh, question and we know that krishna was priya sakha the most dear friend of arjuna and who is a friend we raised by listening to the proverb a friend in need is a friend indeed so priya sakha the dear friend he is the dear friend who can guide at the time of confusion sri krishna is truly the most loving and most uh, dear friend of arjuna because arjuna could get the resort of sri krishna's sri krishna's help for eradicating his mental confusion and his decisionlessness so here we see in the story of the gita krishna though he was a leader though he was the planner though uh, the story uh, was the game plan and the brain child of uh, sri krishna but he takes the role of best friend of arjuna in such a way that arjuna could believe him totally and that is gita is teaching us that if we believe if we have faith in, in our friend if we have if we follow the a uh, good advices of our friend then only we can prosper we can get out of our gloomy situation so uh, according to me krishna is the best mo- krishna is the model of the best friend ever the world has produced
ma'am uh, one question that has come from dr anamika sharma is that do you think uh, gita should be incorporated into the management syllabus obviously uh, actually in many of the management schools so the teachings of gita in part obviously in part uh, um, they, they have incorporated the professors they have incorporated in the management schools many parts of the gita especially the the part which uh, shows the advices of krishna how to control the mind and i think with the uh, upcoming new education policy gita will be more popular and uh, each and every management school uh, will take resort to gita for educating their students ma'am i said one last question but there's one thing which i feel if you would answer would be good this is by dhruvajati sharma uh, from tejpur and he has said that due to um, the current situation of pandemic and the children being all locked out and all so there are lots of suicidal tendencies which are going around or people are being depressed so can gita help um, such people or people in general to obviously, come out of this situation obviously i have mentioned that because gita teaches us the connection between the individual soul and the universal cosmic energy actually we the individuals we are the particles of the cosmic uh, uh, cosmic or uh, an universal uh, uh, concept we we cannot be isolated uh, i identities we are always uh, we are always related to the broad scope of universe uh, the universe and that is why if we can relate that connection then we will never go uh, to take the that Uh, the the suicidal attempts or something like that we will not go uh, to follow the negative paths this connection is very important to decipher if i am connected to the society if i am connected to the parent a parent to connected to my parents if i am connected to my friends then i will never take such a decision which will spoil the society as a whole if i lose the connection if i remain in isolation uh, and and this is the tendency of today's uh, younger generation to remain in isolation they always detach themselves try to detach themselves from the society but this detachment creates negativity in the mind we should be attached with the society whenever some negative uh, intuition comes in our mind we should be more uh, vocal we should be more attached uh, to our uh, kith and kin to our uh, loved ones so that we can come out of our depression easily as we all know that bhagavad gita is an ancient indian scripture which guides us showing various spiritual paths through which we can gain self knowledge and inner peace but today's deliberation has also given us a different perspective a different way of looking at gita that is from the management point of view when we talk about management we always think it is something to do with commerce with business or industries but what you have said today and after listening to you i'm sure a lot of people will look up and read gita from a different angle from a different management thing so this is something which is very very old thank you ma'am for your deliberation which was wonderful opening our eyes to the ideas of management which was there hundreds of years ago but of which we were not aware of